You are from Austin wants to know, are there, is the legislature discussing any options for reducing tax on farmland? This viewer uh, uh, notes that Minnesota farmland is taxed much higher than in many parts of the country and thinks this is a disadvantage for Minnesota farmers. I don't know. Let's start with you, Representative Torkelson. Uh, you represent some of the, uh, I think I can safely say, some of the best farmland anywhere in the world. Oh, thank you for that. I wish it was on my farm. <laughs> um, this is a big issue. Uh, farmland values have shot up over the last few years, uh, which brings the property tax valuations along with it and raises property taxes. Um, there are a number of, prop of proposals out there. Uh, you know, right now, on s when you pass a school levy, operating levy, it only affects the house garage in one acre. It doesn't affect your farmland. Mm -hmm. But when the school tries to pass a bond issue to build a new school, th that affects the farmland too. And in a district where you have lots of farmland and not very many other, much other business property, our farmland property taxes are skyrocketing. It's, it's a genuine problem, and now we've seen farm commodity prices drop off dramatically, but the property taxes are continuing to rise. Uh, I think we really need to take a close look at this and try to figure out some way to come up with some property tax relief for Agland. Yeah, you know, this is, a, this is a hot topic in the tax committee, uh, property tax division especially, because, and I do think that, you know, uh, farmers make a very compelling argument, and, and you laid out the reasons uh, exactly why, but, um, you know, the question is, how do you respond to it, and how do you deal with it? Because if you, if you look at the numbers, um, you know, as, as the values increase and the numbers go up, well, there are times when the value also decreases and the numbers drop way down. Um, but... I think we need to take a look and try to find a, a reasonable and more fair system uh, for Aglan. And, you know, some of the proposals out there, quite frankly, I think are Band-Aid approaches, and, and we shouldn't be taking, you know, short-sighted, uh, just try and patch it and get it through. I, I think we need to take a really serious look at how we do this, uh, not necessarily uh, any different than how we did uh, with mining in northeastern Minnesota and how we tax those properties uh, based on a production value. Uh, so maybe there's some other options out there that we could talk about, but, you know, over the last two years, I, I think we made some good progress in property tax relief, and, and we need to continue that. But this ag piece is interesting because there's certainly more, I think, work that could be done there. I would agree. Uh, the convoluted tax issue in Minnesota has been around for a long time. I mean, it's just not real clear what goes on. And, and I, uh, you know, with the commodities as high as they were the year, a couple of years ago, the values did go up. But, of course, now when the commodities are not there, the value doesn't seem to go down. So they get taxed the same. So it, it definitely needs a, needs a look-see. There's no question about it. And uh, tax policy in Minnesota has always been a, a very challenging issue. And uh, um, it just has to be looked at. I mean, it should. Yeah, and, and you're hitting right on the nail. You know, this when you're looking at, let's, let's stick with education. A kid's a kid's a kid. You know, your per pupil unit that you're getting is what five thousand six hundred and ten dollars. But those of us that come from property poor districts, where I live is a property poor district. When you look at most of the rural communities, you're right. You don't have a big business there helping level off that tax base. And so, you know, where do you start to get equalization of those property taxes? Where do you start to do it? I'll, I'll use a metro. Uh, and they used to make fun of the, if I wanted to get $900 in, in per pupil unit and I lived in Coon Rapids and I had a $100,000 piece of property uh, at, at the time before we did uh, the uh, uh, equalization bill two years ago, you would have to level levy that property tax on $212 to get the 900 If I lived out in Orono at the same time, $100,000 piece of property, the tax levy would have been $74 to get that 900 bucks. So throughout the whole system, whether you're, you, you come from an area where there's lots of state land out there and you're not able to generate that, that revenue for the, definitely to build new buildings, to alternative facilities, we need to look at that. Some of those districts, I know the districts you guys all come from, you're not able to access, although you can, um, the, the alternative facilities money to help keep the roofs from leaking and keep the HVAC systems and everything going. But absolutely a deeper, deeper discussion about what's parity and fair because, and I'm, I know I'm rambling, but 13, uh, our, our constitutional amendment, Article 13, says free and appropriate public education for every child in the state of Minnesota. That's the way to look at it.